Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more, and like and subscribe for better fruit next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Crash Bandicoot, platforming royalty and a master of running in a straight line. But a different kind of running in a straight line than the other platforming mascots. I really like that about you though. I kinda hate it when things keep speeding towards the right. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to wear a mask to keep ourselves and our family safe. Wow, two political jokes right off the bat. Also, isn't it horrifying that wearing a mask is a political opinion? Anyway, we've also got to run and jump good. If you've got precision platforming, it would be hard to do that if you were bad at hopping. Finally, we'll get a slide tackle so we can hit people without losing momentum. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just make sure you've got a solid strength score. We'll start with constitution. You're the living result of Cortex's experiments, living being the key word here. Strength next, you bash the baddies, by jumping on them or swinging your fluffy fists. Dexterity after that, despite your big basher energy, you're also pretty quick and good at avoiding obstacles, as long as I'm not the one playing. Follow that up with wisdom. Animals like you enough to let you ride them, even if you're not super great at pulling the reins. Charisma is a bit low. Sure, you can shout at Nintendo through a megaphone. I don't know if that's canon, though. And we'll dump intelligence. Brain damage isn't something Crash needs to worry about. If you're tall, fluffy, and have big, long, stretchy limbs, I'm calling you a bugbear, which technically means I'm also a bugbear. We get plus two strength and plus one dexterity, 60 feet of dark vision. Long limbs to hit creature with melee weapon attacks from up to 10 feet away, which includes your fists for when you spin to win. Your powerful build doubles your carrying capacity. You can also make a surprise attack to deal 2d6 damage when you hit a surprise target. You also get the stealth skill for free. Maybe you want to pretend you're Metal Gear Bandicoot or something. Honestly, Crash Bandicoot does sound like the name of a Kojima character. Take the athlete background for athletics and acrobatics proficiency because you're going to need those to run forward or hear me out backwards. We'll kick things off as a barbarian for two skills from the barbarian list like animal handling and perception, helping you ride a polar bear and see them in a snowstorm. You also get unarmored defense, making your AC 10 plus your dexterity and constitution modifier when you're not wearing armor, and you can even use a shield too. You don't, you just wear blue jeans, but you could. You could also rage, which gives you resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage, advantage on strength checks and saves, and extra damage to your strength-based attacks, which includes your unarmed attacks as well. Currently, those are going to be dealing one plus your strength modifier and damage, but we're going to fix that up next level. Because we're multi-classing at level one, don't you you just love it, we're going to dip over to fighter right away, scooping up the unarmed fighting fighting style to deal 1d6 bludgeoning damage with your unarmed attacks, 1d8 with two free hands, and 1d4 damage to a creature you have grappled once per round. Crash doesn't really grapple, he just sort of bombards into people. Is there a simpler word for that? Either way, you also get second wind, letting you heal 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action, helping you survive an extra hit. We're going to bounce right back to barbarian now. I always try to hit our goals as soon as possible. At home, I recommend multi-classing after you get ability score improvements. Anyway, second level barbarians get reckless attack, letting you make your attack with advantage as long as you don't mind giving your enemies advantage to hit you. Obviously, that's why I die so much when I play, not because I'm bad at it. You also get Danger Sense, giving you advantage on dexterity saving throws from spells and traps you can see. There are a lot of them on the path. Third level barbarians can choose a primal path. The Ancestral Guardian will give you Ancestral Protectors, or as I call them, Aku Aku. This means that when you hit a creature while you're raging, the mask will impose disadvantage on them when they attack creatures that aren't you. Even if they land the hit, the target resists the damage. I'm sure that Crash would send Aku Aku to defend Coco if they were to fight at the same time. We'll get the more in-game use of him later. For the level barbarians, get an ability score improvement to our feet. We're going to go with the charger feet. That will let you attack as a bonus action after you dash with your action. Then add five feet to the damage rolls or five feet to your shove attempt so you're pushing 10 feet instead of five, as long as you've moved at least 10 feet in a straight line. You only move in two directions, so that should make it pretty easy for you to slide tackle someone. Fifth level barbarians can spin a little faster with extra attack, letting you make two attacks instead of one with your action, getting the most out of your rage bonus. Pretty much everything you hit with a spin attack dies instantly, so you gotta hit hard. You also get fast move movement here, making you run 10 feet faster per round for some full-on speedrun tech. Sixth level Ancestral Guardian Barbarians get Spirit Shield, meaning when a creature within 30 feet of you is damaged, you can use your reaction to reduce the damage by 2d6. You can use this on yourself, since you do tend to be within 30 feet of yourself. Pairing this with the resistances from raging, you'll be one tough bandicoot. Seventh level Barbarians get Feral Instinct, giving you advantage on initiative rolls, and you can ignore surprise if you enter your rage immediately. Why would you go into a fight without a mask if you don't have to, am I right? You also get Instinctive Pounce, letting you move half your movement speed with the same bonus action you used to enter a rage, which will make you run faster when you got the gold mask. I actually don't know if he runs faster. Maybe it's just the momentum of the music that makes me feel like he's faster. Eighth level barbarians get another ability score improvement. Let's get our strength up to hit a bit harder. We're pretty bulky already with Aku Aku. At this point, we're going to bounce over to fighter level two to grab action surge, letting you make two actions in one turn once per short rest for a double spin move. I generally just keep using it over and over and over and over again. No reason to stop in my mind. Third level fighters can choose a martial archetype. Cavaliers are the best defensive fighters, but they're also pretty good at riding animals because they're 
airborne to the saddle. This gives you advantage on dexterity saving throws against falling off your mount, no matter what weird animal your mount is. You also get unwavering mark, meaning that when you hit a creature with a melee attack, it's marked and will have disadvantage on attack rolls against creatures that aren't you. If they succeed on hitting your ally, you can hit them with a bonus action attack next round, dealing extra damage equal to your fighter levels. You can use this an amount of times equal to your strength modifier to punish anyone who kidnapped your girlfriend. Fourth level fighters get another ability score improvement. We'll use it to cap off our strength for the best belly flops possible. Technically, a belly flop is an unarmed attack. That's pretty fun, right? Fifth level fighters get nothing because extra attack doesn't stack at the fifth level. Though it does stack later, think of this as an empty box with some TNT on top of it. Sixth level fighters get another ability score improvement. Let's get some more constitution now, not only for bigger HP, but also better AC, just some thicker fur. Seventh level cavaliers get warding maneuver, letting you add a D8 to the AC of a creature within five feet of you as a reaction. If the attack still hits, the target resists it. You can even use this on yourself so you can get resistance to every type of damage whenever you need it. You can use this an amount of times per day equal to your constitution modifier, which we can improve next level. Eighth level fighters get another ability score improvement so we can get our constitution score even higher. If you're rolled well on your stats, you might have even capped it off at this point. I'd be proud of you for doing that. Great job. I don't know that though, so I'm going to go with the pointer right. Ninth level fighters get another little Aku Aku blessing with Indomitable, letting you re-roll failed saving throws once per long rest. This will be helpful if the thing that hit you isn't stabby, slashy, or squishy. Tenth level cavaliers get to hold the line, meaning that when you hit a creature with an opportunity attack, they can't move for the rest of their turn, and you can make opportunity attacks whenever somebody moves within five feet of you, regardless of whether or not they're leaving your threatened area. The hallways you're running down are pretty dang narrow. It should be easy to catch things as they move through. Eleventh level fighters get an extra attack that actually does stack, letting you attack three times with your action and add your extra rage damage to every single one of them. With an action surge, that's six attacks per round with a plus seven damage modifier. Maybe with that amount of damage, you could even get into Smash Bros, if only. Our capstone is the 12th level of fighter for one last feat. At this point, we need to cook. The chef feat will give you plus one to your constitution. You have proficiency with cook's utensils. You can cook some wampa fruit for a number of creatures equal to four plus your proficiency bonus, giving them an extra D8 of healing on short rests. And you can make a number of treats equal to your proficiency bonus that creatures can eat to gain your proficiency bonus in temporary HP by eating one as a bonus action. Obviously, this is basically the same thing as getting an extra life. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you're a very durable tank with over 200 health, 20 AC, and ways to give yourself resistance to every other type of damage. That's not to mention the true role of the tank, reducing damage for other bandicoots, which you can also do with Cavalier and Aku Aku abilities to keep your friends and family safe. Finally, you're very good at getting around with big jumping ability and extra movement speed to get where you need to go. For weaknesses, you don't have any magical damage, so if you're fighting higher level monsters, that could be an issue. Your soft stats are also very low as well, since you didn't have saving throw proficiency with any of them, that could be a big issue. Finally, you don't have many ranged options, with middling dexterity modifiers, even though you are proficient with ranged weapons. But you're not called to shoot with with a laser from very far away, you're called Crash. I'd recommend crashing. Get up close, spin to win, and save the day with a patience only 90s kids would understand. Just watch out for people who could mess with your head. You don't exactly have the strongest frontal cortex. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more, and sub to Tulak and Mango to watch my buddy Mango play some Crash Bandicoot.